Y'all know by now how much I love Pleasant Hill Grain, and today in this video, we're gonna be doing another haul from them, and it's actually no grains that I received from Pleasant Hill Grain. Um, I have received some other things, and we're gonna be unboxing those today. Hey everyone, welcome back to Grains and Grit. My name is Felicia, and on this channel, we talk about all things real whole grains from a biblical perspective. So this video is actually gonna be a bit unique because I recently had a huge shopping haul from Pleasant Hill Grain, but it actually only contains three items because these are some big ticket items that I'm really excited to get my hands on. So I'm gonna be unboxing these items for y'all and um, I'm gonna show you if there's any setup needed. We're gonna go through setting it up to see how difficult it may be. And then I'm also going to be giving y'all a little bit, a little bit of a review as well. Another way this is a unique video is two of these items are actually technically not grain related, but you may be very interested in them because I know many of y'all um, are interested in homesteading, um, canning, uh, things like that. So while this is related to grains, it might be related to more of the grit side of this channel. So let's get started. So as you can see here, I've kind of teased y'all with the first one. This one actually says it on the outside of the box. Yes, my friends, I finally got my hands on the Zoharushi Virtuoso bread machine. And I'm super excited about having this machine, mainly because I've received a lot of questions from y'all about how the recipes work in the bread machine, um, how the Zoharushi works, all those things. So this actually is gonna allow me to have that experience so I can help you guys out and be on the lookout for a video at some point where I'll be doing a more in-depth review of this machine and also how to work it with my recipe. So let's open it up. So one thing I love about Pleasant Hill Grain is they always come with not only your receipt for everything, but you know, they come with, for this one, they have Pleasant Hill Grain's tips for the Zoharushi bread maker. So they have things like yeast, yeast activity tests, proper dough consistency, um, and they have um, an actual recipe on here that you can use as well. So that's a bonus that Pleasant Hill Grain likes to pack in. And as far as packing goes, it's it's just the box in, in a box. So let's unpack this baby. Ten. <laughs> I'm so excited. So again, this is the Zohurushi Virtuoso, which is the, from what I can see, um, the top of the line that they have. They do have a, a Zohurushi, I think it's called Supreme. I'm not really sure the differences between the two off the top of my head, but when I do a full video about the spread machine, I will probably be mentioning the differences between the two. So first off we have in the box is the operation instructions, a whole bunch of other things. This is actually quite a thick package here. Okay, so we do have the full operating instructions. Looks like there's a way to register it as well. It also comes with, oh cool, a recipe book. That's actually, this is a big, I have to say a quite large recipe book that comes with it. Um, so several recipes want y'all they even have on here or have in here cakes jams I think that you can all do in the bread machine <laughs> so cool I will definitely be looking through this recipe book to see what all we can do um, okay we also have the specific okay so this is same operating instructions Looks like it is in French. Um, yeah, so the recipe book is in French as well. So those who might speak English and French, you're in luck. <laughs> um, okay, and then also how to measure ingredients. So they have a little um, guide here, both English and in French. So good to know with that. Now to get it out. Oh, 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 wait. All right, we got it, we got it. All right, so here we go. I'm so excited. Okay, now we'll go ahead and tell you guys, this is this is heavy. I would guesstimate this to be about 20, 25 pounds, I think. So keep that in mind. Um, I did have I did have to put the box on the floor in order to lift that up. But here it is. And you can see how big it is, but I'm 
really excited. It looks like there's no assembly required except for whatever this is. Okay, I think these are the little paddles that go inside. So these are in the foam part. Now they were at the top, so I was able to see them fine. Let's open it up here. Inside, okay, we have other things. Oh, cool. Okay, awesome. It actually came with measuring cups and a little measuring spoon. And trust me, I can always use measuring cups here. I, I, I never have enough. So, okay, so we have your typical measuring cup set. It is plastic, but hey, it came with it. And then we also have a little measuring cup that goes to, okay, clearly this is not in America. So 360, I assume that's milliliters that it goes to, but there are no um, standard <laughs> measurements on here. It is only in the metric system, but on their cups, these are, these have a quarter cup, a third cup, but here it's only in, I'm assuming those are milliliters. I will have to check the instructions. And then one of these cool little spoons here that looks like a tablespoon and that looks like a teaspoon to me. So I think that's what that is. Again, we'll have to read the instructions. So I did confirm that these are in milliliters. So I will probably come behind and maybe write on here um, the cup the cup measurements. So really all that it looks like assembly required is just adding in the paddles. Now these are, I assume, they are metal. They're definitely not plastic. So we just add these in here. They seem to fit well. And that's really all the assembly needed. You just have to unpackage it. So that's pretty cool that you don't have to do that. And there is the bread pan. It easily comes out. This is for a two pound loaf. And so now I get to figure out how this bad boy works. <laughs> but there it is with the unboxing. As you can see, it's very easy. No assembly required. And I didn't even know it came with the extra measuring cups, um, this thing and the tablespoons. So that's really cool. So again, once I learn how to do this, <laughs> how to do this, um, I will be making a completely separate video. If it is up, I will link it in the description box below. All right, so let's open up what's next. All right, so next up is this huge monstrosity. <laughs> um, not bread related in the slightest, but this is the Roots and Harvest Chicken Plucker. Super heavy, <laughs> I will say that. Yes, Pleasant Hill Grain does actually sell a chicken plucker and a lot of other homestead stuff, but we have processed our own meat birds before. We do it by hand. I still recommend um, learning that skill by hand, but this bad boy, we've had our eyes on <laughs> to hopefully have that'll significantly cut down the time of processing our meat birds. So time to open this up. First of all, it is extremely heavy. Um, this says it is about 30.75 kilograms, which I estimate, I think that's around 60 pounds. So I actually could not lift this onto the table. Um, my husband had to do that for me. So, but we'll see how much of that is packaging as opposed to the actual chicken plucker itself. All right, so first off, what we do have is of course the um, the shipping receipt from Pleasant Hill Grain. So unlike their other products that I've noticed, um, there is no like, here's some tips and tricks, I guess, cause it's a chicken plucker and there you have it. All right, so here we go. It is packaged well, I will say that. I don't even know how I'm gonna get this thing out of here. <laughs> I also do not know if there's any assembly required. All right, so let's just first talk about it. This is a, it says it's a 20 inch drum is made of stainless steel and looking at it in here and in according to the picture it does look like there's a little bit of assembly but it does say um, that it can easily accommodate larger birds or multiple smaller birds at a time it says in just 30 seconds it gets the feathers off of a bird which is amazing considering it usually takes me a good 10 to 15 minutes <laughs> to pluck a chicken as opposed to 30 seconds. So that that's a huge time saver. Okay, working on getting this out of the box. <laughs> this probably should be a two person job. It would be a lot easier, but you know. Okay, so I think we have it under the box. Now the manual is actually attached at the bottom of this thing. Okay, I do have little things falling off. I do not know if I'm gonna need them. So be careful unwrapping this. I will save the plastic just in case. Okay, so here is what it looks like coming out. So clearly, 
assembly is required. So what we have here is we have our use and maintenance, a warranty registration. It does come with one year warranty. And then a warning, do not use high pressure water gun to wash this chicken plucker. So clearly only use a hose. Okay, and we got some tools here. Okay, so here's what I do not understand is it immediately starts with assembly with looks like the leg and things like this. But my problem is how do I undo all this? Cause it looks like everything is, is in here and I have to get it out. And it doesn't tell me how. And I do not want to break it, so let us figure this out. <laughs> oh, oh, there it goes. Oh, okay, okay, so I, okay, okay, there we go. Oh, figured it out. Okay, so these little metal things here that were kind of falling off, that's what was keeping everything together. And once I tilted it, it started coming undone. So that was the point of these little, little metal things for that, so. Okay. Okay. So we do have parts inside that we are taking that I'm taking out and then still heavy. <laughs> That's what it looks like on the inside. Now we'll say the heaviest part is this base. This is where the motor is. And this is actually quite heavy. Now we have all the parts. <laughs> now let's try and assemble this. It actually shows me putting the wheel on here, but doesn't show me how to attach it. Okay. We're just going to move on and I'm going to see if at some point it tells me when to attach this. So what it does is over here, but this fits in inside here. So you clearly will probably need a wrench. I'll come back behind and tighten these up further. And now we do the left. I'll come hell or high water. We're going to figure this out. Okay. And then last we have the leg part. Okay. So with the help of my husband, I figured out <laughs> the wheel situation. Um, so it actually isn't super clear. It's actually I would say not clear in the instructions, but you do have these large washers. So the wheel goes on, the washer goes on, and then we call these a cotter pin, but in here it's actually called a, um, a clevis pin. So it's this little thing that goes here to keep the wheels on. And so I just had a, but, but the good news is that it actually, if you look at the picture on the box, um, that's how we figured it out is just looking at the picture on the box because it was actually pretty clear how these attach. So downside to that. But otherwise, it actually so far has been easy to put together once you figure out all the, where all the parts go. Again, I definitely recommend you probably do this on the ground. I have it on the table for you guys so you can see it better. Okay, so we're going to move this over. Oh, this is definitely the heaviest part. This is also heavy, but not as heavy. All right, so we have this bottom plate here removed. Oh, okay. This was cool. One thing I noticed. So clearly the leg over here is like a wheelbarrow effect because these wheels, don't know if you can see, are actually not sitting on the ground. So I guess the point is to, you could pick it up like this and then be able to roll it like a wheelbarrow. So that's really cool. Now let's add this baby onto it. Now these three little fingers sticking down go on the hole here. It's kind of obvious because it's not going to fit anywhere else. So this is a small bolt, small washer. Pretty cool. Okay. So it is saying that I need to line up arrows. Okay. So we have this yellow arrow here and we have it here as well. That line. There we go. Okay. Oh, cool. And you know, it's lined up because then you can feel it where it sits into it. Okay. And then we, okay. That's, that's the cool safety thing. So it has these little, um, mini carabiners that lock this. That is a very smart feature. So it doesn't come undone when this thing is whirring around. And now we just fasten all these down. All right. And there you have it. So once I figured it out, it's mainly the leg, the wheel situation. Once I figured it out, it actually is not difficult to put together, except just know this is heavy. But the few things that I like about this is this is stainless steel. This is solid metal. I mean, this thing feels really, really solid. So there you have it with the Roots and Harvest chicken plucker. Um, super excited to finally have this. And this also gives you an idea of the, how big it is. I am 5'2" standing at a table here. Um, so it is, you know, it is low and easily accessible. 
All right, so this has actually taken me a couple of months to film because I was waiting on this bad boy. Ta -da! I'm so excited to finally get my hands on an all-American pressure canner. Um, this is basically the Cadillac of pressure canners. I don't have a pressure canner, um, so I've been. This has been my on the bucket list for a while. So let's unbox this and see what comes with it. Before, <laughs> real quick, before I unbox this, um, if you've looked at All American Canners before, they have multiple ones. Now, Pleasant Hill Grain does sell all of them. Um, this one is the All American Model 925. So what I was looking for, I definitely wanted the two racks. I wanted a larger capacity, but I not necessarily the largest one, because <laughs> um, I think that would be too big for my needs. Now, I think I was looking at the model 920. I think that was the one that I was ultimately wanting, but they were going to be on back order for who, who knows how long. So I went with the 925, the model 925, which is pretty similar to this. So this is a, um, this, well, I can can 19 pint jars or seven quart jars. And whenever I really thought about you know, the capacity I would be canning, that sounds about right for me. So now let's open up. <laughs> so first off in the box, we do have the packing slip of the order. And then it looks like this is basically just straight from All American Canner. So we have, first up is our, our regulator weight that we have in a little envelope. We also have the manual um, and it comes with recipes as well. It actually does. So we got tomatoes, um, beans, pears, plums, all kinds of things. So fairly thick manual there. So instructions with some recipes. They also come with a packed and checked by whatever number that that is. And here we go. So here's the lid and in inside the lid right, is our canning racks that we have so this allows me to divide it a bit and then our lid and wow this is this is heavy duty <laughs> actual canner and i think that's it yep so so actually pretty pretty simple um now it does come with rubber bands holding all of the screws tops in but you can see whew, <laughs> you can see actually how how big this is and they do make them bigger so you really just have to determine what you want now do know that this is like solid metal um, but I will say I can lift this now it will be quite probably impossible for me to lift it if this was full of water um, full of cans but as of right <laughs> as of right now I can lift it with it being empty. So that's another thing to consider if you're considering an all American pressure canner, which I highly recommend to look at because, um, you know, canning, <laughs> it's, it's going to help preserve your food. And the reason I went with all American is because unlike other pressure canners, there's no gaskets that you have to make sure that you replace or check once once a year or maybe once every two years depending on your use so this is more i would say self-sufficient because i don't have those gaskets i need to keep track of and all that it is it's just really these two pieces plus you know the dividers from whenever i need them so there's one that goes in at the bottom and then if i have so i can do one layer but if i want a second layer i put this on top of the jars to do a second layer and this just comes right on and to close it, now this is me doing this without looking at the instructions. <laughs> yep, to close it, you just twist these around. So it's actually pretty simple to use. And then you have to follow the instructions because with it, we already do have our geared gauge. And then this right here is our weight and the weight is based on where you live from what I understand a pressure canning. I took, I have taken one class on pressure canning. Here we go with our all American canner. There's really not much, much to the unboxing. It pretty much comes together. It's put it together and go. And I'm really excited to 
try this out. So that's kind of my thought process with the All American Canner. Um, again, I haven't used it yet, but I'll hopefully before this video has to go live, I've used it and I'll let you know my thoughts. But considering that Jill Winger of the Prairie Homestead highly recommends the American Canner, pretty sure I'm going to love it. All right. So having to record this in various places based on my recording schedule, it's been a little crazy, but let's go ahead and review some of these products. First of all, the Zoro Rushi bread machine, love it. Definitely needed, has a learning curve to it. Um, so I do plan on doing my own video about that in the near future, um, but, but I've learned, I've just come to really love that bread machine. Now about the Roots and Harvest chicken plucker. If you, I'm gonna be showing you guys some video of us butchering some chickens. So if you do not wanna see that, I suggest skipping this part of the video. But bottom line, once we figured it out, there was a bit of trial and error with it. It is so convenient to have. Um, so as you can see here, um, it's we could only fit really one bird in for it to pluck efficiently, but our birds were averaging at around six pounds this time. It was a really great harvest. Um, but here you can see that it is getting it off. And yes, please know that these chickens are dead before they go into this plucker. Um, now, a couple of things that we did learn is 150 degrees is the temperature that you definitely want to use um, to dunk them, to scald them in before sticking in, them into the plucker. The directions say 140 to 150, but we found that 150 was the sweet spot for us. And also the instructions do not say this, so do this at your own risk. But we also found that when we kind of sprayed the chickens with a water hose while they were spinning in the plucker, it really helped to get those feathers off. And when we did those two things, they were coming out super, super clean. Maybe only a few little pin feathers and that's it. So again, there was a learning curve, but once we figured it out, it was wonderful. And third of all, the All American Pressure Canner. Love this pressure canner. Now pressure canning is intimidating when you start. So for me, even though I have done it before, it was still kind of slow going at first until I got you know, into my routine. But ultimately it is not difficult. You kind of have to just get over your fears. And as you can see here, um, here it's going on my stove top. It worked very well. And I even have a glass top electric stove, which I hate, but you know, I can make it work. And then all of my beautiful um, chicken stock that I was able to can as well. So I'm really excited to be able to have this ability to safely can meats and chickens and stocks and, and things like that. But otherwise it was easy to use. Um, it held the temperature very well. It was it was just wonderful to use and I'm I just love this canner. So there you have it, y'all. A wonderful haul from Pleasant Hill Grain. Thank you so much, Pleasant Hill Grain, for being a sponsor to Grains and Grit. Be sure to shop with them at grainsandgrit.com slash PHG. They do have some wonderful sales going on right now, and there are some sales on their grains at the time of this video. So I definitely would check them out to always see their sales. Go to their sales tab on their website, and it shows you everything that they have on sale. Right now, the Zohurushi is on sale right now. So you may want to go check that out. But otherwise, I hope y'all had a wonderful Thanksgiving this year. I know we did. I've really enjoyed seeing y'all's recipes that y'all have tried using um, freshly milled wheat. I love it when you tag me in those recipes. And as always, I hope y'all have a wonderful day and I will see y'all next week. Bye.